Uno, one. Secondo. Ok. One, two, three. Perfetto, grazie, scusate. So, um, How many customers has Genesis Mining? Genesis Mining has been growing a lot over the last years and we've now hit 2 million customers. And um, <clears throat> so in these facilities uh, you mine uh, cryptocurrencies. Could you please tell us what do you do in this facility? Right, so We're here in the Enigma mining farm where we, where we mine cryptocurrencies, especially with graphic cards, GPUs. Um, so, uh, so uh, for example, uh, Ethereum, ETC, Monero, Zcash, all the GPU mineable coins are mined here. We can't mine Bitcoin here um, because you need specialized chips to do that and we don't have that at this location. So you won't see any of those today. So um, what we do here is mining, which means that we have computers working 24-7 around the clock. Um, For, um, mining cryptocurrency has maximum efficiency. Great. Um, why it is important to produce cryptocurrencies according to you? What is your opinion about it? You, 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 were, you were very passionate when you told me the reason why you are involved in the project and uh, why it's important to mine cryptocurrencies. Could you tell me again? Definitely. So, uh, mining is a complicated process. It's not as easy as just turning on computers and generating money or cryptocurrencies. It's not that easy. Um, the, the mining process um, has those different parts. The, the idea is that you're giving into the decentralized network your computing power. You're supporting the centrali decentralized network of, um, of cryptocurrency nodes. And as a reward for this security and the, and the transaction processing that you're giving into the network, you get a reward and that is some, crypt some fresh mined cryptocurrency. So um, actually what the mining is for, for a blockchain network is its backbone. The mining is the backbone of a, of a cryptocurrency network. And without mining, it cannot exist. Because there would be, it wouldn't be any security aspect. So, so mining is really the, 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 the central part, like the material form that the cryptocurrencies take. So you are saying that uh, making money is just a side effect of uh, using the blockchain. <coughs> absolutely, absolutely. Miners mine because they want to um, earn some money, of course. There's also a big business aspect to it. But what it gives to the network is the security and processing power that it needs to process transactions in a, in a decentralized, trustless way. Okay. Uh, some says that... Uh, Some say that it's uh, not needed to trust each other in a Bitcoin network, for example. Right. Some say that uh, what is important is that uh, this network is decentralized and trustless. What's yeah. your opinion? Well, the whole, the whole point of a, uh, the, the revolution that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general bring to, to the financial world is that you can do something that requires a lot of trust, project processing financial transactions without needing to trust anyone. This is a revolutionary point. And the, the important distinction that you need to make is you can still trust people, right? If you're sending your mother money, you can trust your mother, no problem, but you don't need to. So you can also do transactions with financial partners, with, other, with banks, you know, between countries without having to trust that anyone will act in a good way. You can, you can be completely sure that it's in the network in its decentralized way has no um, single point of failure. But so d the core of this uh, social phenomena, phenomenon, which is uh, <coughs> mining a cryptocurrency, is uh, <coughs> open source technology. How important is open source in this work? Without open source technology, Bitcoin could not exist. So the, the whole idea of that it's trustless means that everyone can verify its authenticity on its own. And uh, an intrinsic part of that is to be able to read the source code, right? In the end, Bitcoin is software. And if you don't know what the software is doing, if you can't read the source code, then you cannot trust it because you don't know what it's doing. With Bitcoin, you don't have to trust that someone else is doing good things because you can, if you want to, read the source code yourself and understand how does Bitcoin work, how does the communication Uh, work and, and how, how does the whole system comprised of? Good. C could you define what a cryptocurrency is? Ooh. 
it's difficult to define what a cryptocurrency is. I mean, in the end, it's software, right? It's people installing software in their computers and running it, or on a server somewhere and running it. So that's the Try again. What is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is software running on many computers worldwide, which are all communicating with each other. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's difficult uh, to say because I mean, cryptocurrency, you can't what, touch what, it, right? What is the need for a cryptocurrency? Why, why do we need the cryptocurrency? Well, our, our existing financial system was based on gold. Gold was transacted, and because gold was getting more difficult to transport and uh, to divide, people were using paper currency. Um, representing gold stored in a central bank somewhere, and they were using this to make it easier tra to transact with it. Nowadays, we're in a we're in a highly technical world where trans transactions are done 99.9% uh, online through through the internet, through some kind of networks electronically, basically. And the need for paper currency is going down more and more. So what we're seeing is that our financial system is based on assumptions that are not true anymore, and that's that people want to. Uh, touch their money and spend it in shops and so on. What you want to do nowadays is to have your money flexible, to be able to move it worldwide, to have no to have no limits. And the idea of having many different currencies for everyone in the world is uh, is becoming more and more cumbersome. So when you're traveling, you always have to change your money to the local currency. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't it doesn't lead to more productivity. Bitcoin is the next step in the evolution of financial systems. If you see it in a way where you can do transactions from A to B without needing to trust anyone and without having a central party mediating all of this. So you, there's no central bank, there's no loans, there's no this and that. You can just, you have bitcoins and you can send them between each other and you can be 100% sure that this always works and it's unblockable. It's unblockable. It, it, it depends on the hashing power. And uh, now <laughs> China has uh, more than the 50% of the hashing power in the world. Well, um, hashing power is a very important part of Bitcoin. You could, it could be seen as voting rights in, in Bitcoin. So more, if more than 50% vote for something to happen, it will happen. You can see it that way. In that, in that, in that sense, having more than 50% of the network sounds really dangerous, but that would mean that it would allow you to do evil things. But actually, uh, actually, that's only partly true, because if there's only one trusted node left in the network, if all of the Bitcoin nodes turn evil and there's only one node left somewhere and that's still doing the correct procedure, then it's provable that the entire network stays secure. Okay. So some say that the proof of work to mine Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency is a, a stupid process and it must, be, must become easier and faster. What do you think? Proof of work is using a lot of power worldwide. That's definitely true. And um, people are seeing it as a waste because it's using electricity only to mine these bitcoins and to verify these transactions. And then it just turns into hot air. And um, people see that as a waste of, en of energy. And um, well, I think it's easy to agree on that it's using a lot of energy. That's for sure. It's using a lot of power worldwide. But I would not say that it's wasted. I would say that it's being used. And I think if we're seeing energy being used, to create a new version of our financial system that removes the element of trust from all of our, uh, of our basic social structure, then that's a really interesting experiment and I would very happily invest into that with, for example, electricity usage. There's many things nowadays using a lot of power. Facebook, you know, people pressing the like button on, on Facebook or, or Google for the search engine, or of course all the ex also the existing financial system with, uh, with banks. You know, they use a lot of power, they have lots of data centers. So um, I think comparing to this, um, mining Bitcoin, doing proof of work um, for Bitcoin is a very valid use for power. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why you are in Iceland, because uh, uh, in Iceland there is a lot of renewable energy, uh, the cost of energy is uh, low, and uh, what are the reasons why you are in Iceland? <clears throat> right. Yeah, we've been in Iceland for, for a long time. Since 2014, we've been in Iceland. We've had an operation here. And uh, as a part of our worldwide operations, we still really like Iceland as a, as a, as a, as a point for our data centers. So um, Iceland has a very, um, very cool climate, which makes cooling of the machines very efficient, because you can use outside air to cool them down, like no 
climate control needed, anything like this. Um, it's got very good existing infrastructure, so electrical infrastructure, internet infrastructure. Um, the population is um, speaks speaks the language very well and is very technically minded and are very open minded. The political system is very open to cryptocurrencies and are, and are really happy to experiment with new things. That's very important, of course. And um, and just like you just like you said, the, the the power cost is low, and we're using completely renewable energy. So there's no bad feelings on any side. And when all of these factors come together, for example, in Iceland, it's an ideal mining location. Okay. Uh, some say that uh, you, you do not employ. Uh, people from the place uh, you are located and work uh, with your facility. Uh, there are some criticisms parking uh, mm. um, now in, in, in even in the Icelandic <coughs> Parliament. What right. do you think? Right. Well, I think um, I think while while they while there's some facts that start um, I should start differently. Um, people are criticizing Bitcoin miners for not employing many people um, locally and not creating jobs or, or helping the industry in general in, in, for example, Iceland. I would disagree with that. I think um, people who are, who are looking at the topic uh, this way and are doing these kind of arguments are looking only at a very narrow aspect of a, of, a, of a data center or mining operation, and that's the ongoing maintenance. Of course, to increase the efficiency of our operations, we try to, through software automation, automate as many processes as possible. And only uh, on-site personnel is only needed for hardware failures that can't be fixed by software remotely. So um, we do employ um, local people, definitely. We have our data center engineers here around the clock to make sure that if an emergency happens or when a machine breaks down, it can be fixed quickly. We definitely do that. But of course, we try to keep our um, personnel down to a minimum because it would uh, reduce the efficiency of our operation to, to, pay more, to pay more people. Now, looking at it from this side, it sounds like we don't need many people. But that's just the running operations. You can't forget that building data centers means that we're uh, supporting local uh, local industry, the power companies, the construction companies. Uh, we're involving many people in uh, data center building expertise and cooling expertise. You need uh, IT consultants, network technicians. The, the, the whole the whole area, right? You need, you need some people from every technical field to come together to build a data center. And just al that alone, I think, is a massive boost to the to the to the to the industry of a country, and also to the local population, because they just get involved in all of these these technical procedures. Great. Um, I can expand on that because uh, in Iceland, there's a current there's big discussion going on in Iceland, and it has been for the last years. If um, if Iceland should be exporting their power to England, they're thinking about building a power cable or laying a power cable under under sea from Iceland to England and selling the excess power. Because they have all this natural energy, right? So that's the one party, and the other party say, no, we shouldn't export our power. We should keep our power, uh, keep our uh, electricity in the country and use it as a as a to to to, to attract big industry, like data center industry, for example, and then. More focus more on uh, internet infrastructure, so lay more glass fiber cables to Norway, England, USA, um, Greenland, and uh, to basically to export internet services and to make us uh, Iceland more of a more of a data center hotspot. Now, I would be strongly in favor of the second. I think uh, actually using the power in the same country and attracting more industry into the own country is a much bigger benefit than just selling the power away. That's very interesting. A very interesting point of view. Uh, so you are the biggest uh, cloud mining company in the world, right? Genesis Mining is the largest cloud miner in the world. We're up to two million customers now, and um, we've seen absolutely incredible growth of the whole of the whole industry as a whole in the last okay. in the last years. It's been a great, so great ride. I, I, I saw. I, I can see in your eyes a, a great passion about uh, your job and about uh, this is uh, it seems uh, that you are uh, pursuing a, a mission is it true absolutely absolutely I mean the, me personally but yeah. also the people that I work with my colleagues and Genesis mining as a company also we, we have a vision and that's to to see Bitcoin and blockchain technologies in general take all the baby steps they need to take, as a new technology always needs to take, to become mainstream, to, to offer the benefits that it provides to the, to the broader population, and not just to some technical nerds 
right? Okay. So we want to make the technology mainstream. We want to educate people about what are the benefits about it, what does it actually do, how is Bitcoin helpful, and we want to provide the service to the to the to everyone, to the world, at the same time as, of course, um, doing our cloud mining. Why should I give to Genesis Mining? Uh, my money to mine cryptocurrencies. Maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. It's it's a personal decision that everyone needs to make. If he wants to, um, if he wants to buy some Bitcoin hashing power, what I can say for sure is that if you're making, if you're thinking about, if you want to do mining and you're thinking about either buying a miner to your home and running it yourself, or renting it in the cloud and just paying for a service provider to to to, to handle it for you, um, paying for it in the cloud is a very attractive option, because Running these machines can sometimes be dangerous, it can be time consuming, you need to be technically minded and you need to currently be, uh, constantly be there to look after the, the miner. And uh, for, for if you're really technically interested, you should definitely do that to gather some experience. But if you just want to do it as a test to understand more about the um, blockchain and understand more about the mining process and more about the whole ecosystem of blockchain technology and you just want to mine to, to, to understand how that all fits together, and I think cloud mining is a great option because you don't have to worry about all these technical details and it's just it's done for you. So I, I, I've heard that um, to mine by yourself, uh, your Bitcoin, Zcash, Monero can be dangerous. Why? Mining by yourself has its hazards. While it can be done right, and then that's absolutely no problem. And I'd encourage everyone to give it a try if they, if they want to try it. They shouldn't be scared. But um, when, you, when you start mining, if you're starting a small operation at your home, you have to be very aware of the risks. Um, fire safety, um, making sure you have the right cooling, making sure you're not um, in violation of any, uh, of, any, of any regulations. For example, the cables that are laid through um, for, from your power plug in the wall through your wall to the main electrical distribution, they can be old and rusty. It can be dangerous to connect something there that pulls a lot of power 24-7. Right, so um, so I'd be really careful connecting things, and just to make sure that you're not <laughs> that you're not in danger of burning your house down. Some say that. Se si stanca, ci possiamo fermare un attimo. No, perché non mi sa spettare. Facciamo di partire? No, ne dobbiamo. Mi fate un chuck mini. Restaurant or fish market? Restaurant. Fish restaurant. Mi fate un chuck Yes. Sì. The fish restaurant is close to the harbor. One, <coughs> two, three. Chuck, three. Bravo. So, um, how much does it cost to create a single machine to mine uh, cryptocurrency? It's a good question, but it's also a really difficult question to answer. This has, um, it really depends on which cryptocurrency, how you want to build it, what are you building it for, for maximum stability or for maximum cheapness or for maximum efficiency. So I think it's really hard to really give a number. But there's many different builds out there at the moment that, are, that people are building to, uh, to understand what's the best way to, do, um, to, to build a mining rig. Okay, if I want to start in uh, mining a <coughs> cryptocurrency, at my place, how much money should I invest? Well, for, for example, if you want to buy the standard Bitcoin miner, which is still the Antminer S9, there's others on the market now, but let's just take that as an example. Most people would know it. I think it's around $700 or $800 right now. So you can buy one for that price, pay for some shipping, and then connect it at home. <coughs> I'll say it again. I can say it again. Yeah, yeah. So, how much does it cost to start mining uh, on your own uh, Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. If I would like to do that, uh, how much money should I invest? If you wanted to mine Bitcoin, you could buy a Bitcoin miner. They come as a finished package. It would cost you about $800 or so, and uh, they would deliver it to your home. And then you could connect it up to the power and um, to the network, configure it to mine to your, um, to your Bitcoin address and would start mining Bitcoin. But the profitability of that really depends on your electricity prices at home. So uh, depending on which country you live in, and what kind of internet connect, or what kind of power connection you have, of course not internet, and the, the cost of power can wildly differ. 
But it, so to, to me, it sounds uh, useless in the sense that uh, uh, to have the proof of work uh, to be rewarded in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, uh, you must solve an algorithmic problem. I mean, you have to do a brute force attack, okay? Is it true? Yeah. So, so having one or two or ten machines is kind of useless. You think it's useless because you're competing with the bigger miners? Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, 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 the one who is rewarded is the one who solves the crypto cryptographic problem, the encryption problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So with 10 machines, I cannot compete with people uh -huh. who has uh, 100 machines. Okay, okay, all right. So if you have just one or two or 10 machines, you can't, it, it, it would seem like you couldn't compete with a large miner who would, who would always out-compete out, out you. Um, the, while that's true in theory, the way it works is that many small miners that have only small operations pool all of their power together in what's called mining pools. And if you mine for a mining pool and the mining pool finds, finds a block, then, it's share, then, then the block reward is distributed fairly between all the individual small miners. That's great. So the mining pool is actually the large miner competing with other, other large miners or other mining right. pools. But you can, yeah. So the point is to be in a pool. Exactly. I understand. Which is the, the real quintessence of open source technology on which mining is based. So <coughs> collaboration. Sharing exactly, yeah. and collaboration. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's the real uh, spirit of this. Uh, um, I've heard that uh, uh, in Iceland, a security guard stole 600 machines to mine cryptocurrency. Yes. What do you know about it, about this story? Well, um, as far as I know, it's true. And he stole these machines and they're actually gone. So, so they haven't been recovered yet. However, he has been caught after a complicated story. He has been caught and he's in prison now. But I think the machines have not been recovered. So I heard that they are in China because in China they have a great amount of electricity to use for mining a cryptocurrency. <clears throat> well, no one knows where the machines are for sure, but um, uh, he stole the hardware and it was very obvious that it was him. So after a couple of hours, the police had him in custody and they put him in Icelandic prison. Unfortunately, he decided that he should walk away from the prison because it didn't have any bars. It was, it's Icelandic prisons don't have locked doors. So he just walked away, took the next taxi to the airport and, uh, and flew to Sweden with the next plane. Actually, the same plane as the prime minister was flying at the same time. Um, and then he escaped in Sweden and uh, spent some time in Europe. Then they caught him again in Denmark and now he's in, in the Icelandic prison again. But this time he signed a contract that he won't try to escape again. <laughs> fantastico, <laughs> fantastico, fantastico, fantastico. Bellissimo. That's a great one, isn't it? But it, it, it is meaningless. It, it does not make any sense, the fact that you are a security guard and you steal the machines and then you go to jail. It's, it's just stupid. It probably made sense for him. Probably someone paid him pretty well. Right? I mean, probably there was someone behind it who actually has the machines now, and he paid him a lot, a lot the security got a lot of money to, to take it all on his own person. Bravissimo. Of course. Bravissimo. Yeah. You say, of course. This, is, this was not, of course, for me, but uh, this is. Uh, I mean, if he goes to prison for two I'll, years, you just need to get enough money that it's a good salary for two years you will find people to do it. Criminals are everywhere, even in Iceland, since a short time. There haven't been any murders in Iceland since I think 1970 or so. There's actually no crime. Police officers don't have guns. But, um, yeah, it happens. It happens. If there's an incentive, it'll happen. Geniale. Fantastic. So, for me, the interview is okay mm -hmm. and... Uh, okay, vi faccio un attimo be... piano di ascolto. So, thank you a lot, Philip. It has been a real pleasure to meet Mi fai un aspetta? Sì, faccio un check. Sì.
One, two, three. Chuck, cuatro. I love this. <laughs> Very good. So, Philip, you were saying something about the philosophy of Bitcoin. Could you explain your point of view? Absolutely. Was you, you were saying that you're, um, you're thinking about and you're reporting currently about the, the, the new horizons of technology, how robotics, AI, cryptocurrency, all these new things, how it could come together. And I think especially when we're talking about that, it would make sense to expand on the idea of Bitcoin, how it could be interfacing with society and with AI and with robots. And I think there's, um, that, that's where the, the real benefits of the technology will really show. Because what we've been talking about until now is like how it works, basically, and what the data centers do, and how, how Bitcoin mining makes sense, and how much power it's been using. But the actual effect of what Bitcoin actually brings, um, we haven't touched that too much. So especially when we're talking about, um, let's say, robots or AIs in the future doing things autonomously, then they need a way to pay. They need a way to, to automate in a machine-friendly way uh, payments, micropayments, macropayments. Um, and they need to do so in a way where you don't need to trust the machine. Well, you can't trust machines, right? So I think especially in this kind of context, it's extremely interesting to think about Bitcoin as a decentralized trustless network that's good for automation and made for machines, basically. We're looking towards a future with Bitcoins and micropayments where you can pay Per, where you can pay your electricity usage per milliwatt hour. Every millisecond you could be sending um, payments through the Lightning Network, which is a new development in Bitcoin. Um, you're seeing possibilities where you, you could be renting a taxi which drives its own, which drives itself, and you're paying by the, you're paying by the second that it's driving. You could be on YouTube watch, watching a video and pay by the millisecond that's running in the video. If you stop the video, you stop paying instantly. We're seeing, the, we're seeing, I think we're going in a, in, a, in a direction where we really see a commoditization of, of, um, of, of cash, of money. And it's not in a way where, like right now, where you make deposits and then you use the deposit piece by piece and then you pay more again to deposit more or monthly payments. But I think we're going to, in a direction where, where as, a, as, a, as an actor in the economy, if it's a company or a person or a robot, it doesn't matter, you're connected to thousands of microservices paying for everything as you go and as you need it. Where well, you're paying for exactly what you need, when you need it. And I think that's, that's something that's not possible with the current financial system. And it's something that's not possible um, from, with the ideas that the current financial system is built upon. Right? You need, was, uh, if machines and companies are making these transactions, you can't trust anyone. You don't want to trust anyone. You want that whole problem of trust moved away. So what you need is something that needs no trust, and that's what a blockchain, a decentralized system, can do. I am um, a cognitive psychologist. The, the, uh, the, si, si, si. The, 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 she's uh, setting up the, the camera. The way we choose the... the no, the way in which you use the word um, this is not part of the, the of the show. The way in which you use the, the word trust is something strictly related to your personality. Think of it. Yes. To your childhood. Anyway, um, so what you were saying is very, very interesting. Uh, you still talk about the finance, the financial institutions, uh, the money and so on. But I think that uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain uh, are something which are going to change <coughs> the governance of the whole world. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. Okay. So do you have an idea about it? Absolutely. I mean, people see Bitcoin as, a, as, an, as an addition or maybe even a replacement of the current financial system, which is revolutionary enough and most people have enough problem digesting these, uh, this idea. But using Bitcoin as a currency, as a, as a way of transferring value, is just scratching the surface of what you can do with this kind of technology. Uh, blockchain technology, like Bitcoin, is not, is not necessarily only a financial tool much more than that. It's a trust machine 
it by just running and by having the mining backing it, giving it the value that it, that it possesses, it's generating trust all the time. And with this, you can do all kinds of things. You can do documentation. You can replace notaries. You can have decentralized voting systems. All this kind of stuff where you have centralization of trust in the current system, where you pay people a lot, lot of money and hope that they're not corrupt. All of this, these are the problems. Was they always go wrong sooner or later? Can be solved. I totally sooner agree later. with you. I totally agree with you. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, we can stop. <coughs> That's okay. It's it's very precise, concise, and uh, that's yeah. good. Good. Philip. <laughs> bravo, bravo, bravissimo, bravissimo. Ma non mi doveva assemblare un computer. Adesso glielo chiediamo se, se can, can we take some shoot, a shooting uh, no, with you want me doing you? some yeah, doing something with me. What do you think? Yeah, sure. It's <coughs> too much, I'll just too start much doing drama. something. No, no problem, I'll just